Why is it that so many of our deals stall? We have these great presentations, we think we've got the right solution for the person, and they just don't buy from you. What is some of your, unmute yourself, what is some of your reasoning behind why you think some of your deals are stalling? Product knowledge. Lack of product knowledge, do you mean on our part? Uh, on the customer's part. The, on the customer's part. So lack of product knowledge. We haven't taught them enough about our products. Is that what you're saying? Sometimes the customer doesn't really know what they want or if it's actually achievable. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Who else? John, You. I think you were saying something. I was just going to say that you, you know, when the, the, the moment of truth is, does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And the person says, yes, it makes sense. You say, congratulations, you made a great decision, and you move towards signature. So I think at that point, if you if you don't have pen and paper handy if you're in front of the client, or if you don't have the contract ready to sign, um, it could get stalled out because you didn't move fast enough. Yep. So I think part of, part of it is speed and confirmation at the point when you ask for commitment. And seldom have, do I have a client fall out once they say yes, uh, but it's the speed of which getting the agreement to the client. The yeah. Thought I had. yeah, and John, I think you've maybe ran into this a couple times where you get the close, they're like, yeah, we want to move forward, and maybe it's not you, maybe it's somebody else on your team. We keep talking, we keep selling. You ever have that happen? And then you actually yeah, end up talking yourself out of a deal. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so who else has some ideas on why our deals stall? Yeah, hit me. Um, the I depend on discretionary uh, income mm -hmm. to make the purchase for the supplemental insurance. And with inflation being so prominent now, people spending so much on fuel, groceries, and everything else, uh, they just don't feel that they have the discretionary income to purchase any supplemental insurance. Yeah, and, and GT, Greg, I think you're gonna like what we're about to talk about, okay? So I heard a lot of different reasons, but I didn't hear what I was thinking of, so this is good, because I wanna put a new reason in your mind as to why our deals stall. A lot of times it's because we're focused maybe on an older sales process that is very, very rigid, and hey, I've gotta demo this. I've gotta show you all of the different products that we have literally giving them too much to think about, right? We put too many stages in our deal, which is kind of what John was alluding to. Man, we got the close and then I didn't have everything ready. We make it very difficult to buy from us, okay? There's a lot of things that add to this, but here's what you have to realize, all right? Even though we say we're all about change, right? Just about everybody, oh yeah, change. I like change, change is good. We're lying. Human beings hate change. I'm going to say that again because it's really important for you to understand. Human beings, me, you, all of us, we don't really like change. We're creatures of comfort. So what we have to understand a lot more than showing them more about our product, making them sit through another demo of our product, going through all of the options that we have, and I'm not saying we don't need to do that. We still need to understand, okay, what's their situation? We still need to be able to show them, okay, I'm gonna, here's what we're gonna do to get you to this point. But what a lot of times we forget to do is focus even at all on what's gonna happen if they don't do this, okay? We, we spend literally zero time on that. We ask them zero questions about, well, what would happen if you guys do nothing? What's going to happen if you don't get supplemental insurance? What's going to happen if you don't get leads coming into your business because you're not doing an ad campaign with me? What's going to happen if you don't order these drains right now? And let me give you a few examples on this. Is, is, um, is Chad on the call today? Chad, are you on? Here's one for Chad. Okay, so Chad's selling them ad campaigns. I believe it's through Zillow. He's working with real estate agents. Here's a good question that Chad might want to ask those real estate teams. Huh? So what if you don't do anything about this and your agents keep getting lower quality leads as the market cools and interest rates increase? 
right? We spend so much time, oh, we need this campaign. Our lead conversion is great. Um, I can show you how I can take your cost per click down 30%, but yet we forget to ask them, what's gonna happen if you don't buy from me? And that's a legit question. It's not a rhetorical question. I want you to wait for an answer from that person. So just out of curiosity, let's say you guys don't do anything. You continue to stay on the plan you're at. You've let me know that your lead quality is deteriorating. So lead quality is going down. Uh, just out of curiosity, so, so what if you do nothing about this? And lead quality continues to go down. Uh, the, the real estate market continues to cool and interest rates continue to go up, making it harder for you guys to get listing agreements. And allow that person to sit with that for a second, right? Jojo, I'm sorry, Joanne. Joanne, she's selling merchant services. What if she maybe asked a question like this? Uh, what, just, just out of curiosity, what if your cost for your employees keeps going up? They're asking for hourly raises all the time, minimum wage is increasing, you being a restaurant have a lot of minimum wage employees, along with your rent. You had told me that your landlord increased rent. What if you're not in a position to raise prices on the menu? How are you gonna find that additional savings that you're gonna need to put into your hourly, that you're gonna need to put into your rent? And let that person sit with it, right? Then Joanne is perfectly positioned to go, you know, if we can get you on the new merchant services plan, a lot of times, most people don't realize this, but just that 2% decrease in your merchant services fees can go a pretty long way into possibly even covering the expense of an additional employee. We've got to get them to think about what is the cost of not doing it. For my, uh, my QM folks, my drain folks, right? You guys don't think drains are important. Drains are super important, especially if I'm building a luxury condo complex. And let's say I've got that person. Hey, does it make sense to, to purchase, to place the order? Oh, no, no, no. We've got to look around. We've got to make sure that this is the best price. So Ben with QM might be asking this. And again, guys, we're not asking this in a snarky tonality. And we're not asking this as a rhetorical question. You know what those sound like. Don't sound like your first grade teacher, right? What are you gonna do if you don't do your homework? I don't want you to sound like that. But I want Ben from, from uh, QM to say, you know, so I get it. I, I totally understand. you. You want to make sure you have the best price, but what if we wait on ordering those Del Mar linear drains while you look for alternatives or possibly even a lower cost, what if that delays getting the drains to your general contractor and they can't put the drains in the shower floors and that delays them actually finishing the floors or worse, they do the floors without the drain. And now that general, you've got to pay the general contractor for either a retrofit or for them to cut holes in the drain. And again, not rhetorical. Ben, not rhetorical. Wait for an answer. And you're going to be shocked. They're going to be like, well, yeah, I did. I did have something like that happen before. Got it, got it. What did it cost you? A, a lot, it cost us a lot, but here was the other problem. When they retrofitted, uh, this was a sink issue that we had. We didn't get the sinks in time. I had leaks. Got it, leaks. So what did that cost you? It, co it cost us a lot because then when the tenant came in, I had this punch list and on half of my units, I had a, a problem with sinks, right? Let them sit with, make sure you're asking them. Right, John Fitzgerald, so I, I get it. I, I understand that you don't have budget for sales training for the team right now and you want me to call you after the first of the year. J just out of curiosity, what if for all of Q4, your leads actually go down and your people aren't able to close? What is that gonna look like? What's that gonna cost? the organization and then let John answer that question. Far too often we skip through things like that and we miss, we build all of this value in the change 
and we get them to feel none of the pain of not changing.